Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're joining me for the first time, I'm Athena Gentles, a final hair medical student and the mother of our beautiful baby girl, Sinaya. Now, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, click that subscribe button and remember to like this video and share it with your family and friends. Thank you. Alright, so as promised in my last video, today I'm going to be talking about when I was told that my baby had spina bifida. Well, I wasn't really told, but I was given an ultrasound result that indicated that she would have had spina bifida. So let's just get into the story. Okay, so in my last video, I spoke about the fact that I had uterine fibroids. And because of that, I was at risk of preterm labor. So when I was 36 weeks, you know, I'm getting closer to 37 weeks. So I was very excited, you know, I was pumped up. We had a lot of plans on the 37 week. I had a doctor's appointment and also that was the day of my exam. It was a Friday. I had an exam and I was planning to go out the Friday. So we we're going to go out to eat and drink after. Not alcohol though. I didn't drink alcohol in my pregnancy, guys. So I was planning to go out and eat and drink and relax after the doctor's appointment because my exam would be behind me, you know, and I would be 37 weeks. So I was very excited about that. But because of the fibroids, my doctor had me doing more ultrasound than usual. So she actually sent me to do an ultrasound to just to see where the fibroids are, to see if any other fibroids would have been obstructing the passage of the baby. So I made an appointment at the ultrasound place. And the appointment was at 2 p.m. On the day of the ultrasound, I got a call saying that they can't do the ultrasound at 2, I should come at 4. But, you know, I I never really thought anything of it. I was just like, okay, 2 to 4, not a bad thing. So I went to do the ultrasound. When I got there, I got there like 3.45. I noticed that there are a couple of females before me. And I'm like, they told me 4 o'clock, so I still have to come here and wait. But I was just excited to see my baby on the screen, so hmm, no biggie. I was there, 6 o'clock come now, still no ultrasound. So in my mind, I'm just like, why is this taking so long? So I went to the lady, and I was like, what is happening? I've been here since minutes to 4, and I still haven't gone into the ultrasound. And she was like, well, we're sorry, but our machine was down, and we had to get a replacement machine, and that's why it's taking so long. So I was just like, okay, I was there already. I'm just going to continue to wait. Minutes after seven, finally, they called me in and it was my turn. Hmm. I was really excited to see my little baby on the little monitor thing, you know, all excited. Yeah, checking to see if the baby was okay. Mind you, my anomaly scan that I did at 18 weeks and three days, it was normal just to get that out of the way. So I noticed that when I was there, she was doing a lot of maneuvers, like she was telling me to turn on my side and, you know, but I never really think anything of it because I'm just like, hmm, I guess it's probably normal because as you get later on in the pregnancy, it becomes difficult to visualize stuff. So maybe she was just doing that to see better, but yeah, so I just thought everything was fine. Yeah, basically. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Okay, just checking out my video guys yeah let's get back in all right so basically that's that and i left you know i went back to pick up the result the next day i don't know i just i was just looking to see if my fibroids had grown any bigger so i just scanned down to the part that they had in bold and i saw lemon sign then i saw referral to fetal maternal specialist so you know like instantly i'm like this means that something is wrong so i went online and i my google fingers went off and i google searched lemon sign and i saw that it meant that spina bifida and in the reading i realized that lemon sign it's only like only two percent of persons with the lemon sign actually don't have spina bifida so at this moment, I'm instantly praying and I'm like, please let me be a part of that 2% because I didn't want my baby to be sick. And 
you know, I messaged one of my friends and I was like, hey, yo, what you know about Lemon Sen? Because she was on peas at the time. I'm like, yeah, me get this result and me really, like, I'm losing it. What you know about this and whatever? And she was like, I never really hear anything about, I'm, I can Google for you as well. And I'm like, all right, cool. So I started to Google more because I know that there are different forms of severity of spina bifida. So I was like, maybe it's not the bad form because some can be mild and some can be severe. But then when I continued to read it, I realized that the lemon sign actually indicated the more severe form. And that is a form where the spinal cord is actually exposed and they can actually have paralysis and incontinence. And right then and there, I started to cry because here I am thinking that what kind of life is my baby going to have? You know, and I started to Google, I started to Instagram, ha ha like hashtag Spina Bifida to see like what some kids, how they were doing with it. And I actually found a lady who she had us, she got the ultrasound results and she had a lemon sign and she actually did the operation on the baby while she was still pregnant and the baby was doing fine so now i'm upset because i'm like you tell me that my anomaly scan was normal and then all of a sudden i'm 36 weeks and you're just now telling me that my baby have a spinal defect which you were supposed to pick up on the anomaly scan so i'm really upset right now and there's nothing that i didn't see anything on the internet that you could do anything at this point but you know i was just really upset and it got to a point where i started to question god like i was just like why me like you know for those of us who know me before now i was a teacher and when i was a teacher you know i used to help a lot of students and i'm just thinking that i used to take care of all of these students and now i cannot help my baby like I felt hopeless in that time I can't do anything for my baby so all I was doing was just crying like I was just crying every time I would see a baby riding a child sorry <laughs> imagine a baby riding a bicycle anyways every time I'd see a child riding a bicycle I just start to cry because I'd be like then I would not be able to do that and you know I was heartbroken I was right as I was at term and I was going to just stop taking the pills I was I was able to relax I get this news my doctor's appointment came and i went in and i was there talking to her and she actually contacted some other specialists she contacted two fetal maternal specialists and both of them basically said the same thing they said that the fact that they didn't see it on the anomaly scan they highly doubt that that ultrasound was re was correct and also it doesn't make any sense i repeat the ultrasound at this point because it won't change the management i'm 37 weeks like nothing can be done like i was never the type to question god because i know that he always sees me through so you know i felt bad in myself here i was questioning god asking him why and you know i just started praying more i just you know just asking for strength at this point i didn't understand why my baby was going to be sick and I just said to God that I hope she wasn't, but if she was, just give me the strength to deal with it. And that's when I started to do better because before now, like after I went to the doctor and everything, I was really depressed. Like I was just crying. Like I would just sit and just look through the window and I just started to cry. I probably cried more during that period than I've ever cried in my entire life. Except from when I was a baby, because I don't remember that. But I'm telling you, because I'm not a crier. Like, I'm, I don't cry a lot. But then I just started to ask God to give me the strength to deal with it. And that's when I started to, like, you know, contact her. So I contacted a pediatrician that I knew. I reached out to her, and she was so nice. And she was like, I'm praying for you. She contacted some persons, and she was asking about it. And that's when I started to feel better about the situation. Because I found out that they actually had, you know treatment for them here so they could actually you know she could actually see the doctors here and whatever because that was one of my concern so you know she referred me to a specialist that i could call and everything so you know i started to feel better i started to accept the fact that my child might be sick 
and i just said to myself that even if she is sick i'm just going to give her the best possible life and that's when i started to feel better that's when i started to come out of the funk and everything so i went again to my doctor and when i went she did a vaginal exam and the baby was high head high and uh, you know you have a couple indications of that so she decided that she was going to repeat an ultrasound and guys let me just say this i had the best obstetrician like she made my pregnancy even though i talk about how rough it was she made it so much easier and if you want me to refer to refer you to her you can just link me i'll give you the link like she really made everything easier for me so when she saw that now she was like you know i'm going to do a repeat ultrasound and i was like and she was like i'll also look at this lemon sign because you know i highly doubt it because you did an anomaly scan nothing was there and i was admitted with my pregnancy and she actually did an ultrasound on me and she was like i'm pretty sure that if the baby had a spinal defect i would have seen it on the ultrasound but hmm, i'll still look for this lemon sign she said to me also that because the head was high she might have to have a cesarean section and at this point i was glad for that because i wanted to have the baby so she said come in do the ultrasound i'll see what is happening i went in and i did the ultrasound and the baby was transverse lie or oblique lie but the baby was sideways so she was like okay i'm going to try to get you to do the cesarean section as soon as possible and at this point i was excited she didn't see any lemon sign. She took images and she sent to some more senior persons. They didn't see any lemon sign. But, you know, I got an ultrasound with that result. So I was still, like, you know, wondering. So she just basically speed up everything for me. She got me to do the COVID test because I had to do the COVID test before I was admitted. I got my result. I was admitted. So I did the COVID test the Monday. I did the ultrasound the Monday. I was admitted the Tuesday to do the cesarean section the wednesday so the wednesday morning no the consultant who was responsible for my cesarean section he came and he did another ultrasound still no lemon sign but you know in my mind i'm like you know i am trusting in god i'm praying i know my baby gonna be fine but there's still that little doubt that little lemon sign you know spinning around in my mind so i was still a little you know so he did everything and he was like i don't see any lemon sign and at this point surprisingly enough the baby was head down but my partner and i we were already ready to do the cesarean section initially i didn't want to do a c-section because i knew i would have to stay in the hospital longer and i would have to avoid exercise for a little bit longer than if i did a vaginal delivery so i didn't want to do a cesarean section but when I got that ultrasound result about the spina bifida, I wanted to do a cesarean section at this point because I just wanted to get it over with. I just wanted to see my baby and make sure that she was okay. That's all that was on my mind. So when he was saying that, you know, like, I don't really, I don't necessarily need that cesarean section now because my baby's head down, I was just like, um, I can't go through this anymore. I just need to have my baby. And so, you know, we're there and... 12 o'clock come and i'm still not on the labor ward scene i'm like i wonder if they're gonna put me off i don't want to be put off because i just want to get it over with but anyways now about a couple minutes after 12 they sent for me and i went up and then everything started to go you know real fast i just remember them waking me when i was waking up i just heard them saying that the baby's coming out coming now so you can wake her up and my baby came out and I was like, is there anything on her back? That's all I was saying. And Akashif was like, yeah, they're wiping her off. No, they're drying her off. I don't think there's anything. I don't see anything. And I was like, oh, God, please let nothing go wrong with her and everything. And, you know, I was looking. And then the consultant, he came to me and he was like, you see, there is no spina bifida. I told you there was no lemon sign. And I was like, thank you, God. Like in that moment, I just, I just froze. I was so excited i was just really happy my baby was here and she was fine she was crying she was seven pounds something normal you know i was just really excited and i was just really grateful i say all of this and my experience sounded a little rough but guys i learned so much from my experience i was worried about going to the ward and not being able to have my baby with me 
because if she had spina bifida they would have to admit her to the NICU and after I was in the little room the recovery room with my partner and Zenaya and you know we were just looking at her and we were just so happy because she was okay and I'm telling you the night after my cesarean section not the same night the next night the Thursday night so I had baby the Wednesday the Thursday night it was rough the baby would not sleep I was tired I was exhausted guys and because of everything that was happening in my pregnancy is like I wasn't sleeping much in that last week because I was so worried so I was really tired but and the baby was crying a lot and all I could think about was at least she didn't have spina bifida I appreciated all the crying that night I appreciated not sleeping I appreciated everything because everything was better than knowing that my baby was in the NICU because she was sick so guys my lemon sign was not a lemon sign my baby was fine she's healthy and yeah she's full of energy and throughout all of it her father was always saying I don't think my baby's sick because she's too active she's always kicking nothing is wrong with her and he was right so guys that's it from me remember to subscribe to my channel like the video leave a comment below until next time see you